I cannot be happier with Poison Ivy's rework. She's one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. I absolutely love what they did with her character in the Harley Quinn show. And now she has a rework and she's a beast in the game. Let's get to it. There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Hi guys, I'm Grumpy here and this is a DC Legends video. In this video, I'm gonna go through Poison Ivy. Now, Poison Ivy, absolutely love her character ever since like Batman animated series. Love what, like I said before, Harley Quinn, she's great. I love her actual character in and of itself and the different ways that they've actually portrayed her in the comics and in like animation and stuff like that. Only real portrayal I didn't like so much was the Uma Thurman version and that wasn't even that bad, it was just a garbage movie. So in any case, um, I'm gonna just hop right into her kit. Love the skin, the legendary skin. Also like, all of her skins are good. The legendary skin, the normal skin, and I also like that extra skin where she's like wearing all black. I can't wait till that comes up again so I can get it. Anyway, snap, trap. Damage to an enemy and apply three disease and two bleeds. I said in the verses that I'm gonna go ahead and take her L5, even if I don't take her RB1 because I want that ability of gain five stamina ups. I do like that a lot. It makes her tank here. She's using her A1 relatively often, especially if you're running her with call assist tunes. So having those stamina ups helps her with her tankiness. Pheromone Kiss. Apply four taunt and six stamina ups to a teammate. Apply crit immunity, debuff immunity, and call assist. Like that turns whoever you're adding this taunt to into like the ultimate, ultimate, the ultimate taunter. I could put this on Dark uh, Dark Knight. He's already got a bunch of stamina ups. Now I'm giving him more stamina ups, crit immunity, debuff immunity, and I'm calling assist on his A1, which is like, mm, but still, uh, a Ben Sewer, already a tanky tune. I think he has the highest HP in the game. Put this on him now, and he can taunt himself as well, but now he also has crit immunity, debuff immunity, call assist on his A1, which does a stun and is an AOE attack. Like, Bane, I think I've actually have an example of that in the videos here. Like she's really, really good. This is an awesome ability. Cross pollinate. Apply four stamina ups to all out to ally. And then three to a random ally. Copy up to three random buffs from ally to the rest of the team. Up to two, up to three additional debuffs are moved from ally to another random enemy if no debuffs and apply three stamina ups. I love this, especially if I'm running with Enchantress. Then I can, and everybody's had their turn and lost their damage immunity. The one tune that hasn't lost their damage immunity, just grab that damage immunity and put it on everybody else again. If I'm running with Cheetah and we have a Superboy over there and they already have three strength ups, guess what I'm gonna do? Connor, I'm gonna copy these three strength ups from you or from Cheetah and then just double everybody's strength ups. Like, it's an awesome ability. Toxic Transfer. At the start of her turn, 65% chance to apply a heavy overheal to a random in, a random ally and to, that would suck. Hey, let's give a heavy overheal to a random enemy. All right. Um, and to move up to five debuffs, and I think that might be what, well, anyway, up to five debuffs from the target onto a random enemy. Love it. Also reduce cross pollinate cooldown by two. And this is so awesome because of natural selection. Passive ability, whenever an, <laughs> whenever an ally is healed, apply three disease to a random enemy. We love to see it. However, at the end of an ally's turn, if they have five or more debuffs, use toxic transfer, which then toxic transfer transfers up to five of their debuffs to the enemy team, reduces the cooldown across pollinate by two, and then I can go ahead and use this again where I'm applying stamina ups, moving more deep. It's just stupid good how well these like three abilities work together. It's stupid good. I absolutely love her kid. It's incredible. Um, I'm gonna ring it all out actually because I'm taking an RB1. I'm just not gonna do it now. I'm still trying to save rings for the question and I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to go ahead and do the math on all that stuff again because it's been a while since I've done it out the box like fully ringed out tune uh, from Siege. So in any case, that is her kit. Let's get to the videos. So as always, we are on Heroic Campaign, Final Node, Chapter 8. Um, with her, and I'm going to, because it's happened with Penguin as well, their actual battles took a while. I love her animations, by the way. Her animations are absolutely awesome, even though they don't get zoomed in on. I love them, absolutely love them. So her starting out there with the A3. Um, she's got so much stamina, it's gonna be hard to do anything with it. She's gonna eventually transfer those debuffs over to the enemies. Oh, and then, well, 
her A1, to be real, against um, positive affinity matchups hits pretty freaking hard. Like she, she takes a large chunk out of Spectre, a large chunk out of Black Flash, to the point of where you may want to be, see how she transfer those debuffs, awesome. To the point of where you may want to be careful, like if you're going up against those teams, not to target a Mystic if you're worried about Spectre because she might take them out. Um, she is that good. But uh, it does take her a little while to get through this, but not as long as it took Penguin. Anyway, so, but because, like I said before, because her kit, the way that it works, the amount of overheal that she's giving herself, the amount of stamina ups that she's giving herself, um, the way that it just works, she's going to be able to take care of of this camp, of this node. It's not going to be much of a problem. She's, she's self-healing. She's keeping debuffs off of her. She's putting debuffs on the enemy team. So even when you get to Necron, and that was the problem that Penguin had, um, even when you get to Necron, even if she doesn't do a lot of damage, she's still giving him bleeds of his own that he gave to her. And she's giving him disease and bleeds of her own. So like bleeds and disease don't have an affinity weakness. They just do their damage regardless of. So it's you can see that that's what's actually taking him down is the disease and bleeds. It's not necessarily the hits themselves. So we love to see it. On to the next battle. And that would be, so here we go. I got Lex in for some healage. Uh, we got Peacemaker in to do the damage against Spectre. We have Hippolyta there, Hippolyta there. Shout out to shout out to uh, Dr. Zabaro in retirement um, to give us strength ups. And then I'm gonna use Poison Ivy to copy those strength ups and give us more strength ups. That's the plan. So let's go ahead and get to it. Get some more of this. Get some more of this coffee. I need to switch over to tea or something. I think I drink too much coffee. I think, uh, by the way, buy me a coffee to help support the channel. All right, so, and the way this worked out, I ended up with a stun on both Lex and Hippolyta. Isn't that awesome? All right, so any case, go ahead and put the taunt, I think I put it on, on Peacemaker here. Oh no, I removed the stun from Lex so that he would actually get the turn to heal and maybe remove the stun from others. Drop the A3 from Peacemaker, which I wish that had taken him out, but is what it is. And now I put the taunt on him because I wanted to call his assist one, but two, I was hoping that if by some off chance, Spectre decides to attack with his A1, then Peacemaker would be able to go back at him. So he does attack anyway, but Peacemaker's gonna go back anyway. Good luck, take out Harley Quinn, good luck. She is an awesome support to me. Absolutely awesome. Oh, absolutely awesome. So honestly, all wrapped up and ready to go. More strength ups over there. And if I had it, I mean, she has, I mean, you see what I mean? She did like solid damage there. She had a ton of strength ups. So not the best in damage. She can surprise you with her damage from time to time. But what I will say is you're not bringing her for damage. She can do some, but you're not bringing her for that. Aquaman is there. Aquaman is there so we don't get any crit shots onto Bane. Bane is going to be the focus of this whole team in terms of damage dealing and basically trying to take out the other team. I'm using Poison Ivy to put Taunt on him and also give him all that support. Um, and then you have a Ben Sword there. I know he does put the Taunt on as well, but the main thing I'm looking for from a Ben Sword is that he also heals the Taunters at the end of their turn. So this is all basically to keep Bane sustained so he can do his out of turn attacks and take everybody out. And that was not me trying to do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression of Bane. I don't know why out came out like that, but it is what it is. All right, so Bane starts off. That's fine. That is fine. Okay, we're all good. Let's go ahead and get the taunt onto him. We like to see it. Call assist. Turn meter up. Bane does have... Oh, I thought he had... No, no, he, his mids were removed by Spectre. I forgot about that. Stun him. Let's get some more support over there to, to Bane now. Let's get rid of some of his debuffs and whatnot. He cannot have that heal immunity on him. We need him to be overheal so he can do his out of turn attacks, right? Let's try to take out Ursa. Close. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. All right, we need, we need to get the heal. All, yep, there we go. Heal immunity is off of him. He just ramped off of that attack from Spectre. Now. Now we can do it, cross-pollinate. We just had the toxic transfer happen. 
Oh, oh, I went ahead and tried to take out Spectre, which is a good thing to have the disease and bleeds on him anyway, just so that he's got that one hit. We'd like to see it. Come on, ramp up a little bit, ramp up. Spectre's out of the paint. We're not worried anymore. Now we should be good to go. He's overheal, so he should have his out of turn attacks. Cross pollinate, give him some more mins. Put the taunt back on him with a Ben Sur, and now let Bane just go to work. I loved using Bane. Like Bane was one of, I mean, if you guys have watched this channel at all, Bane was one of my favorites uh, in the beginning of the game, in the early stages of the game. He would go into just beast mode, be fully ramped up and just doing out of turn attacks like all over the place. I absolutely love Bane. And he has an event going on right now and I poo pooed it because he's farmable. But I mean, and this is probably too late because this is gonna come out after that event is over. But there's gonna be another showdown with him. So if you're early in the game, get his frags. I think he's good. Is he great? No. Should you put a bunch of resources into him like I have and take him RB2? No. But he's good. He's good. He's a solid tune in the game. All right, stunned. When I did my free-to-play account, which somebody, nobody ever claimed the free-to-play account. I did the drawing and the guy never reached out to me. And so the free-to-play account is just sitting there. Like after all the work I put into it, it's just sitting there doing nothing. Anyway, so the plan seemed to have worked. Bane is doing his thing, giving everybody strength down. So they are basically not able to hurt us. And he just keeps attacking and attacking and attacking. We love to see it. There were times, like I've said before, there were times where I've had Bane versus, multiple times where I had Bane versus Power Girl, took Power Girl out because he just kept giving her strength downs. But Poison Ivy, let's get to her stats right now. So we're here, DC Legend Toolkit, one of the best sites on, on the web. The web, does anybody even say that anymore? So Poison Ivy, Mistress of Plants, uh, Miss Pamela Isley, these are her reworked stats. Um, and that was the other skin there that you're looking at to the right. Well, I guess my right. Um, that was the one I wish I'd gotten. I didn't get it. I wish I'd gotten it. Speed is at 80. She's slow, guys. I mean, a set is basically average, but slow. Don't count on her for speed. HP 90 second, below average. Strength is 20 second. Kind of high. I'm like kind of high. Like I said, she does hit harder than you would expect, and she can take out Mystics. Um, Intelligence 78. We only care about it in the sense of like her dealing with damage against special damage tunes. She's physical damage, so it doesn't matter. Agility is fourth, making her pretty, like it's pretty tanky. If she's getting agility ups, it's multiplying that. So it's actually making her really, really tanky. Um, stamina, 86, mm, right at average. Crit chance, 94th. Crit value, 56. We don't really care about those stats too much because she's not being brought for damage. But the stamina, eh, you don't like to see it, but when she gives herself agility ups and stamina ups, or when she gets agility ups, she gives herself stamina ups, she's increasing that stamina on her own, especially with her A1, which I gotta hurry up and get to. So, overall, I like. Overall, she does do some damage. You're not bringing her for that, but she can do it. She can help you out there, but her real, her real thing is support. Like she is gonna keep debuffs off your team. She's gonna keep you healed. She's she's awesome in that way. So let's go to the last video. So this one I did kind of to prove a point to myself. I don't know why. I was looking for like a, to a team that had a lot of debuffs because I wanted to show like how she can just like go off with her passive sometimes. Like she's just nuts with it. Um, and I put her up against a team that's all energy affinity because don't matter if you use the support tune the right way, for me like i have a deep roster so if i protect them well enough and to be fair i lose a lot of these battles where i try this experimental bs so you're seeing the plus side of it you're not seeing all the negative and all the cursing that i do on throwing my phone into pillows because if i throw it into a wall it's not insured so i'm not gonna get another phone um <laughs> so in any case let's just hop right into it donna troy is there for multiverse uh, multiverse presence, where she's reducing the cooldown of all abilities by one. Also, we want her as a taunter to deal with this entire affinity matched up team. Um, I'm putting in um, Mara because there's gonna be an AOE attack from Captain Adam, Supergirl, and from the Yellow Lantern. So let's go ahead and get those men's out there on us to help us with uh, survivability. And then Darkseid, once he gets ramped up, I'm looking forward to using the A1 from Dr. Po from Dr. Poison from Poison Ivy multiple times based on the fact that Darkseid should have that call assist for her. So let's just go ahead and get into it. And as I said in the versus video before, Kyle Rayner versus St. Walker's coming, but that's coming only after John of Troy versus Wonder Girl, which is gonna be incredibly hard for me to do, honestly, to make that decision. 
Um, let's see here. And then if I'm going to do a Saint Walker, um, Kyle Rayner end up God, I'm not sure because fire is going to be coming up. I need to do an end up God on her. She is proving herself to be very useful already at L2. So once I get her to L3, uh, L4, I will be very, very happy. Very, very happy. So, and I didn't even go at, go after her during her event, which was just like uh, regrets, regrets, regrets. All right, so there she goes using her toxic transfer, transferring those buffs over. I'm putting the damage immunity from Mera onto Dr. Po onto Dr. Po onto Poison Ivy. I don't even like Dr. Poison like that. Because in case there is the AOE attack from Supergirl that goes off or something along those lines, I'm doing this to reduce her turn meter, um, then she's going to be protected with that damage immunity. Let's go ahead and copy. I think the, no, no, wait, what did I copy over? Oh, the intelligence. Eh, I don't know if that was the best decision. So the disease that was getting transferred over has taken out Supergirl. We love to see it. There goes Captain Adam. Like to see it. So awesome. I love, I love Poison. And honestly, this, these videos don't even do justice to how good she has become. Like she is an absolutely incredible tune now in the game. And it makes me wonder what the future, the next two, three months in the PvP meta is gonna be with these good tunes coming in with, you know, Poison Ivy and Penguin getting their reworks with Donna Troy and Wonder Girl getting the stat boost with um, Fire looking like she's going to be great. Ice is okay, but I don't think she's gonna be meta changing. Um, you also have a question. I listened to the WRL broadcast, their podcast, and heard about that situation with the raids and how it seemed as though Question was just an absolute beast. And so I don't know if the meta is going to change up that much, but we shall see. I'm hoping that it does and we're seeing less specters and less um, black flashes and a little bit more diversity. So thank you guys for watching. I try to use videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So please like, please subscribe. If you don't like it, just subscribe and hit dislike. I'm okay with that as well. Buy me a coffee, help support the channel, help me get all of these videos out. There's so many like ideas and things that I wanna do and wanna make, but I can't, I really, really can't. But in any case, just don't have the time. Thank you guys for watching all the way through and I'll see you next time.